so if I create a new file like this and then I run the source foundation plugin and then I hit generate variables button and wait for this notification to pop out like this now I have all the bits and bytes that I need to design pretty much everything we have textiles with multiple uh, sizes uh, multiple styles each uh, there are six levels of elevation uh, but the most interesting bit of course is inside these uh, variables uh, dialog window so here we have the color theme uh, light and two flavors of, of the dark uh, we have component tokens uh, these are the most common UI elements, and uh, this is um, the visual definition for their properties. Then we have global sizing and opacity collections, um, which are absolute values uh, that you can apply for dimension, spacing, and opacities. Uh, then we have UI scale component, which is made of radii, spacing, and type scale. Uh, all comes in t-shirt sizes uh, with multiple modes um, this way you can create design for different platforms devices whatsoever uh, the spacing um, two scales major and minor minor is for optical compensation if you need one uh, multiple modes the type scale uh, we have font sizes we have line heights uh, these are effectively pairs of values which you can combine to get the tech properties you need and um, uh, lastly we have the typeface uh, this is where you set and customize your font uh, there is a font family of your choice and you can specify their textiles and uh, you're good to go so uh, this is what makes a proper design foundation in my take. Now let's jump to a playground file and expand on uh, customization options. Um, playground file already has all variables and styles baked in, uh, plus there are a few design samples so you can see how it all plays together. Uh, let's jump into the plugin and see what it does. Um, right from the get-go you start with your primary brand color there are 10 beautiful accents to choose from and uh, I just drag a slider to pick the one I need um, I'm fancy for something purple today side note the plugin uses exactly the same design tokens so you can see a real-time preview as you change values um, and here you can quickly enable dark mode preview to see how it works in there um, the next up is neutrals. Uh, hue slider sets the tint and um, with the saturation slider you decide how much of it you want. You can set it to zero for grayscale or it goes up to 40%. I'm going to match the tint with my brain color and lower the saturation down to 10% or something. Um, there is another interesting parameter here. I call it a distance. It sets the difference in adjust in a adjusting colors in this series. As I increase the value you can see that the grays become more and more prominent um, or less prominent. Next comes accent colors. Uh, there are 10 of them. They are very easy to customize. Uh, you just set the hue and plug in the rest. Um, the saturation slider down below sets the color intensity. Um, and for the fine-tuning there are some advanced options basically it's a three range slider uh, where you set accent color luminance um, the left handle sets the minimum um, the right handle sets the maximum and the mid one uh, defines your base accent brightness what's cool is that as I drag the sliders I can see some extra details on key shades uh, which they affect uh, the most important bit in my take is how much does it affect the final contrast ratio um, today I'm going to break some rules and make everything uh, more vibrant um, I feel like at 4 to 1 everything looks a bit juicier so let's keep it this way 
to finish up the colors, uh, we need to define our semantics. Uh, this one is uh, very straightforward. You pick colors uh, that play a certain role. We have four categories. Um, so in most cases, standard ones like success, warning, and errors are uh, going to be like that. So which amber, um, green, amber, and red. And the info can be something unique or aligned with a primary brain color. All right, that's it with the colors. Let's run it and see some results. All right, the theme has changed. And uh, now let's zoom in a bit and see the designs. Okay. Okay. So I feel like the neutral is a bit too intense. Uh, so, and let's try to fix that. Mm, I'm going to go back. Um, I'm going to decrease the distance to make my grays a bit lighter. I'm going to reduce the saturation, like 5% or something. Uh, I'm going to check it against dark mode. Looks good so far. And I'm probably going to dr drop the accent color saturation just a little bit more. Yeah, and let's see what we get. Okay. 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 I feel it looks much better this way. Uh, yeah, it definitely looks much better this way. So I'm pretty happy with the results and I think we can go to our next section. And our next section is dedicated to UI scale. Um, this is where you set defaults for your designs and basically define how big or how small um, your UI elements are going to be. Uh, spacing, uh, it's all about the negative space. Uh, there are three there are three options available. Um, you pick the default one, um, the others to be available via additional modes. And uh, there is an extra option. There is an extra uh, extra option for vertical spacing. Uh, by default, it's set to uneven, which works great for desktop and web applications. If you design for touch devices, I'd recommend to go with even spacing, um, as it makes your elements slightly taller. Radii, three scales, um, and finally typography. Uh, the typography a bit more advanced uh, as it offers uh, some additional options. Uh, you pick the base text size. It's a font size plus a line height pair uh, plus one of three type scales. Um, so major second works best for mobile devices. Um, it's less contrasting uh, typography. Minor third is up is a solid default for pretty much everything, and the major third is for websites, marketing related materials, so everything that requires more contrasting typography. Okay, I'm going to change the type scale. Um, I want to make my typography less contrasting this time, and let's see what it does. <clears throat> All right, headlines and titles got a bit smaller, so it works like a charm. Uh, quick peek at import options. Um, this is all about getting full control over tokens you want to update. Um, this way you turn off features that are not relevant anymore, or this way you can optimize the time. It would need to update existing tokens. Um, if you turn off uh, imports, you did not change. Uh, lastly, there are some tools. Um, Tailwind CSS integration and command line um, so this way I just build some evidence uh, that I can connect source foundation output with actual development. Uh, if you are curious about the details, just follow links that are comprehensive documentation behind it. 
I would like to focus on import and export features instead. Uh, so there are two ways you can export and import your themes. Um, the preset is uh, just a set of parameters and values you set using the plugin. Uh, it works best when you fully rely on a system to maintain your tokens and uh, there is no heavy manual intervention. But even if you choose to fully customize the system, you can export if a raw data. Uh, I made a raw data by serializing all variable collections plus textiles plus effects. Uh, and I would say that this plugin can transfer any design system tokens, any, uh, from one file to another. Uh, import works uh, the very same way. Uh, you either use a preset or a fully customized theme. And uh, just for fun, there are a few pre-made presets available. Uh, you select one you like, um, you hit apply button, and it would uh, apply a preset internally without creating any design tokens. Uh, so this way you can get a solid sense of what you're going to get. So just give it a spin and let me know what you think.